Hey everybody and welcome back. Well, it's been a while since I did a Keyshot 8 video and uh, that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to be talking about fading and I'm going to show you guys how to do this. All right, let's check it out. Here we go. All right, everybody, well, we're in Keyshot 8, uh, Keyshot 8.1.59 Pro to be exact. And what we're gonna be talking about today is uh, fading. Now, uh, what does that mean? Well, it basically means that you can either have a complete object or parts of that object fade uh, completely into tr transparency uh, over a period of time, and you can decide exactly when you want that to start and when you want that to end, okay? Now, uh, that can come in handy, for example, if you have a portfolio where you want to show off your workflow. So let's say you have a character that has armor and weapons and the clothing underneath and so forth. And you spend a lot of time creating all that stuff. So you have your character on the turntable and one by one you have the layers disappear so they can see the layer underneath. That's kind of the idea, okay? But also, let's say you are doing a technical model of an engine or whatnot, and you want to kind of peel away layer by layer, so whoever is interested in watching at it has a better understanding of what's underneath, how you constructed it, and what your workflow is, right? So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna open up a scene here. You can basically open up anything you like, uh, anything you have made. Uh, I'm gonna use something that is a default available in uh, Keychat. So I'm going to go to File, and instead of New, I'm going to go to Recent, because I just used this. And that will open up a scene of a simple water kettle on a countertop in a kitchen. Now, I'm not uh, interested in the whole backdrop thing here in this case. I'm just interested in the model. And if you go up to the scene here, you see that if I click on this kettle here, that's basically what we have as our scene setup. So instead of the backdrop here, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go up to Backplates, and I'm going to double-click on a white solid vignette which will give us just the kettle. Now, uh, of course, you can play with lighting setup and all that kind of cool stuff to make this look even better, uh, but for now, it's not relevant, so we're not gonna do that. Okay, so now we have a nice white backdrop. So what's next? Well, you can start to fade things away, but what I like to do is have a lot more control over that. So what I wanna do first is add a turntable animation to the kettle, and then after that, I'm gonna go in and start to have parts fade off, all right? So let's do that uh, turntable first. I'm gonna make sure that I have it selected and I uh, go into my scene tab here. Uh, I have kettle one selected. Everything has this little orange line around it. So I know that it's selected. And I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go into turntable. Now when I do that, uh, automatically that is applied. Um, I now have an animation slider. And as you can see, it counts in seconds, right? It's set to 30 frames per second right here. And it starts at zero seconds and it ends at five seconds. So my total turntable animation here is five seconds right now. And I want it to be a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do is left click here and drag that out to let's say seven seconds, which is a bit better. Okay. So uh, it's a pretty default thing. So let's jump to uh, the beginning. Let's hit play and see if that uh, is okay for our needs. Let's hit play. And you see that we have a, uh, at least a full rotation, so that's fine by me, and it's repeating, so that's perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna jump back. And now what I need to decide is, okay, what do I want um, to uh, fade out? Well, I want um, the rubber parts uh, to go first, so for example, the handle or whatnot. So I'm just simply gonna double click on the handle, and let's see what happens. Now, if I go to my Scene tab here, and I hover over the selected line, it will show me what is now selected. It is the handle, the rubber handle piece, and a little thingy that's sitting down here that's also rubber apparently, and I want that to go first. So uh, with that selected, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to animation, I'm gonna go to fade, which will create a fade animation by default, and now I can get some control over it. So I'm gonna left click and drag this green bar to where I want it to start. Now I want this to start fading at about one second, okay? Now I can drag the whole thing, so I can drag the bar like this, or I can go in and just pull on it to make it longer or shorter. So let's do uh, start at one second, and let's make that go to a little bit over two seconds, something like so. 
We'll do a quick test to see if it actually disappears. Let's hit play. And there goes our handle. Now, um, I might want to have that take a little bit longer. So I'm just going to go in here and extend that a little bit like so. We're going to jump back to our beginning and then I'm going to decide on what I want to go next. Now, maybe you want to do that based on materials. So for example, all metal parts, all rubber parts, that's possible. Uh, I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take this one as well. This is a ring that is located in the little ring on top there. So I'm going to go in there, I'm going to do animation and fade. And I basically want that to uh, be aligned with this guy. So let's do that. Okay. Let's see what else we have. Uh, this rubber is covered. Let's see what's going on down here. I just double clicked on that. This seems to be some sort of rubber as well. So we're going to go in here, animation, fade. Let's get that in sync with the other one. And I'm not sure whether we have all rubber just now, so let's do a little test run. I'll just stop it right there. And it looks like we got this little black thing down here still that we need to cover. So I'm going to double click on that one. Again, get a scene. And that is this guy. A right click, animation, fade. Bring that in here. And because we're doing uh, repeating steps, I kind of figure you now know how to do that. So. Don't take too long doing that. One more check here. Still have that black plate going on there. So let's see. It's not that guy. It's this guy maybe. Let me just have a quick look here. So this is all metal. And it will show up eventually when we cover the other stuff. And I can just go back. I think it's this one. We'll pull that in. Get it aligned. There we go. Let's see if that works. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So we got all that. What we're going to do next is we're going to take some metal. Okay. So I'm going to go in here and uh, let's just uh, expand this and let's see what is all metal, all of this stuff. Okay. I'm going to go in and I'm going to speed things up a little bit. So I got the first one, right click, animation fade. Second one, animation fade. Third, fade. I'm just taking all the, uh, the metal bits, right? And you can do this fairly quickly. So we've got all of these, they just start slightly after the rubber parts are gone, which is fine. And I might want to have that animation uh, duration be a bit longer. And if I need more space, I can just left click here and kind of pull that up. I think I'm at my maximum. Come on, up, up. Not down, up. Yeah, there you go. So let's click the top one. Control shift, click the bottom one. And now I can expand them all at once. Okay. We're going to jump back to frame one or zero seconds. Let's hit play. Rubber's gone. Chrome's gone. And we have our base left, which is good. So let's do that next. We're going to stop this guy. Jump back to frame one. Double click on our main kettle. And go to our scene tab. This one on top kind of makes sense. Right click, animation, and fade. And let's bring that one in here, start somewhere around there and kind of extend that a little bit. So we have a little bit more than a second of nothing in our scene. So that's at least the plan, right? So let's uh, jump back here to uh, all the way to the beginning and let's hit play and see what we got. There goes the rubber, there goes the chrome, there goes the main body. We've got one more little piece left, as you can see, a little tiny red dot there. I don't really want that to um, disappear as the last item because it looks a bit weird. So let's see what we can do about that. First of all, I kind of need to know what it is. So let me do this. Let me just hit play. And once we get there, I can kind of stop it. There you go. So I assume it's kind of some lead light or something. There you go. 
We're gonna go in here, that's the one, right click, animation and fade. And let's have that disappear together with the main kettle, okay? So we're gonna get that aligned there, we're gonna get that aligned, and this should be it, okay? We're gonna jump back, we're gonna go in, we're gonna hit play. So there goes the rubber, there goes the chrome, there goes the main kettle, and now we have a completely empty scene. That's all there's to it. Okay, so let's say we want to animate this, or better yet, render this. We're gonna to go to the render button down here. We're gonna click on render. We want this to be an animation, so we're gonna to go to the animation tab. My apologies. 1920 by 1080 is good, good. We want the entire duration, which should Let's see, we'll do the work area just to be sure. Uh, okay, it says seven seconds, sounds about right. Uh, uh, AVI output, let's select something on the desktop here. There we go. And that's all good, 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 good. And I just want the video output. I don't need individual frames, so that's all right. I don't want to have individual layers. I just want to have one go, that's good. In my options, I can increase the samples a little bit. And we're good. So let's render. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.